Good afternoon. This is Dr. Suma, Professor and uh, Head, Department of Mathematics, Cambridge Institute of Technology, Bangalore. Dear students, I uh, will be handling Advanced Mathematics 2 for Diploma students, that is Lateral Entry students. Uh, this is a mathematics subject uh, where uh, I will be dealing with uh, vector algebra. Vector algebra. So, in your syllabus, you have three topics. The first topic is solid geometry. So, you have uh, three topics. The first topic is solid geometry, second topic is vectors and third is Laplace transform. So, totally your syllabus covers three topics that is uh, solid geometry, vectors and Laplace transform. So, I will be dealing with uh, the vector algebra. So, it is a very simple topic and you will be getting around uh, uh, three questions from this topic and uh, let us uh, start with some introduction about uh, vector algebra. Now, first thing basically you learnt vectors. So, what do you mean by a vector? So, any physical quantity we can identify as two categories. One is either a vector or a scalar. So, what do you mean by a vector? How do you define a vector? Vector is a physical quantity which has both direction and magnitude. What about scalar? Scalar is a physical quantity which has only magnitude, no directions. So, I think uh, you can tell me some of the examples for these uh, uh, physical quantities. For example, vectors. Vectors, what are the examples? So, you know the basic examples, velocity, velocity and acceleration and some more examples are there. So, briefly let us learn these things, velocity and acceleration, scalar, scalar. So, we can give some simple examples. So, we have time and other uh, quantities. Now, basically what is the meaning of vectors which has both magnitude and direction. So, if you consider velocity, velocity will change with directions, but time, time will not change with direction. So, this is a simple definition of vectors and scalars. Now, coming back to your uh, syllabus, before going to the syllabus, you should know some of the basic uh, vectors. So, basic vectors, basics of vectors are what are those? Basics of vectors. So, first thing, let us know how to denote a vector. Now, before that, let us know how to denote a point. Point means in a real axis, x axis and y axis. x axis and y axis, how do you denote a point? A point is denoted by a coordinates. What are the coordinates? x comma y. Now, this is in two dimension. We are going to we are going to represent a point in two dimension like this x comma y. Suppose the same thing I extend it to same thing I extend it to two three dimension. So, how do you denote this x y z, but where is the third axis? The third axis is perpendicular to these axis. So, this is x y and z. So, these are the three mutually perpendicular axis a point is represented in the form of a coordinate system. What are those? x, y, z. So, this is in real numbers, but the same thing I can extend it to a vector algebra. So, how do you represent this point now? How do you represent this? So, in left, in uh, vectors we represent this as x i comma y j plus z k. A point we can always represent as x i, y j and z k. So, what are these i, j, k? i is a unit vector, i is a unit vector along x axis, j is a unit vector along the j, y, y axis and k is the unit vector along the z axis. So, always this i j k represents the unit vectors corresponding to x axis, y axis and z axis. Now, we know what is the point. Now, we know how, how the vectors are represented. Okay? Now, next let us see how to add these two vectors. Now, for example, let me take a vector a. Let us take vector a. So, how do you denote this? So, we denote this as, so three coordinates a 1 i plus a 2 j plus a 3 k. Suppose, this is a vector a okay? and vector b, vector b, suppose if I denote this as b 1 i plus b 2 j plus b 3 k. Okay, these are the two, in general two vectors a and b. Now, suppose I want to add these vectors. So, how do you add these vectors? 
a plus b just like your sum of two numbers right a plus b vector addition so how to add these two vectors so you will be adding the corresponding coordinates a1 plus b1 into i plus a2 plus b2 so add the corresponding coefficients of i j and k a3 plus b3 k so again what do you observe again sum of two vectors is a vectors okay multiplication also you can do multiplication we have two types of vectors so, two types of this uh, what are that uh, so you can just uh, see in the slide now vector multiplication we have two types of multiplication dot and cross product now let us see what is a dot product it is defined as dot product so how do you define this dot product dot product between two vectors so we represent like this a dot b a dot b so it is a dot product between two vectors a that is a 1 i plus a 2 j plus a 3 k this is first vector dot dot b 1 i plus b 2 j plus b 3 k so dot product between these two vectors how it is defined how is this defined so now you are going to multiply the coefficients of i in both the terms. So, what is the coefficient of i in the first term? a1. What is the coefficient of i in the second uh, vector? It is b1. Similarly, the coefficient of j, a2. And in the sector, second vector, it is b2. In the third, in the th that is the third coefficient a3 and b3. So, we are going to multiply these two. It is a dot product. So, a1, b1. So, it is only the coefficients we are going to multiply a1 b1 plus a2 b2 plus a3 b3 now just observe just observe this so here we do not have the vector what is that i j k that vector is gone so now it is purely a scalar so there is no i j k wherever we do not write i j k it is purely a scalar so what do you conclude by this a dot b a dot b is what a dot product dot product between two vectors these two are vectors right so vectors when you multiply what is the resulting answer the resulting answer is a scalar so this is a scalar dear students always you have to understand this so whenever we take a dot product between two vectors always the solution is a scalar scalar is how it is represented it's something a real number right there's no i j k now this is a dot product now one more definition let us uh, study that is a cross product. So, what is a cross product? Cross product between two vectors. Let us take a general vector itself a and b. So, how do you define a cross product? So, let us learn how to find out the cross product between two vectors. So, how do you denote this by the way? So, we denote this as we denote this as a cross b. How do you read this? a cross b is equal to now this is a simple determinant, simple determinant. So, first row, first row we will be writing the unit vectors i, j, k. First row will be denoting i, j, k. The second row elements will be from the first vector that is a what are the coordinates of the vector a a1 a2 a3 so write that in the second row a1 a2 a3 so the second row is what those are the elements of the first vector and what is the second vector the second um, uh, the third row third row is from the second vector that is b1 b2 b3 now this is a simple 3 by 3 determinant just observe so, we have i, j, k and these are the numerical values, the numbers, whatever it is, a1, a2, a3, b1, b2, b3. So, order is important, a cross b. So, a1, a2, a3, b1, b2, b3, we write the component. So, if you expand this, just check what you get. If you expand this, you get i into. So, if I expand this by, if I expand this by first row, let us, it is easy to expand by first row. Let us expand. So, what do you get? a2, b3 minus a3 b2 into i the first row the corresponding to this then minus j minus j 
then the second row elements will be what? Second elements will be what? A1, B3. So, what how we are going to do this? Just delete this corresponding column and corresponding row. So, what do you get? A1, B3 minus A3, B1 plus K times plus K times. Now, what you have to do? Write delete this. I mean, ignore the first the corresponding column and row, row and column. So, what do you get? K is equal to A1, B2 minus A2, B1. Now, just check this. Unlike your uh, dot product, so what is a cross product? Dot product is a dot product is a what? It is a scalar, but a cross product is a vector. See, students, some of the basics you must understand and remember so that it will be easy for you to solve the next set of problems, right? So, a dot product will give always a scalar, a cross product will always give a vector. So, this is a vector, this is a vector. Now, basically, now what all we have understood? First thing, how do we represent a vector? So, what is vector addition? What is a cross product? And in future, we will be learning some more definitions. Just simply, I will take some simple example because you would not have studied in your lower classes because you are a diploma student, you would not have studied this in your lower classes. Just for your understanding, for your understanding, let us solve just simple problems and take and understand what is a dot product and cross products. Dear students, it will be easy if you take your pen and notebook and just parallel with me, you can also solve, right? I will give some time, you can also solve the problems. Now, let us take a simple example. Let, uh, let me take A is equal to, because these basics are required for the further classes. So, A is equal to 2i plus 3j plus 4k, B is equal to i plus 2j plus k. So, let us take A and B. Okay. Now, how do you find its dot product? A dot B. A dot B. See, all these are the basics that you would have learnt in your lower classes, but this you need to learn before we go to exact syllabus. Now, how do you multiply this dot product between two vectors? Dot product between two vectors is multiply the corresponding coefficient of i in both the terms, both the x, both the vectors. So, 2 into 1 is 2 plus 3 into 2, the corresponding, the corresponding coefficient of j, then plus 4 into 1, 4. So, you have to multiply the corresponding coefficient of i, j and k. So, 6 plus 4 is 10, 10 plus 2 is 12. Now, I think it is clear with the numbers that this example that what is a dot b, the dot product between two vectors is a scalar. So, this is a scalar. See, this will help you when you solve any identities or when you prove identities or some of the problems. Okay? So, these are the basics you should always concentrate. When you have the dot product, it is the scalar. Now, let us consider the cross product. Let us consider the cross product. So, with the same A and B, what will be your A cross B? A cross B will be a determinant. So, what is the first row? I, J, K. I, J, K is the first row. Always first row is I, J, K and what is your elements of second row? Those are the components of A. What are those? 2, 3, 4 and what is B? B is 1, 2, 1. So, just observe this. We have a 3 by 3 determinant. So, if you expand this, what do you get? So, let us try to expand this. So, when you expand this by first row, I into so, delete the and ignore the first column and the first row. So, 3 1s are 3, 4 2s are 8. So, 3 minus 8. 3 minus 8 is how much? Minus 5. Just check this 3 1s are 3, 4 2s are 8. 3 1s are 3, 4 2s are 8. 3 minus 8 is minus 5. Then minus j, minus j into. So, ignore the corresponding column and corresponding row. So, what do you get? 2 1s are 2, 2 minus 4. 2 minus 4 is minus 2. 2 minus 4 is minus 2. Then the next is plus k, plus k. So, ignore the corresponding column and row. So, what do you get? 2 2 is 4 minus 3 into 1 is 1, 3 sorry. So, 2 4 minus 3 is 4 minus 3 is 1. Now, finally, how do you write this? Just rearrange this minus 5y plus 2j plus k. Now, just check the final answer of uh, a cross b, a cross b is a vector. So, finally, always what you have to remember, dot product between two vectors is always a scalar, 
cross product between any two vector is a vector. Okay, students. So these are the some of the basics which you should understand before going to exactly the syllabus. Okay, now. This uh, uh, we will be learning uh, the following topics. So first is vector addition, multiplication, dot and triple products. This will be handled by some of the teachers. Now I will be handling this second uh, second uh, portion that is vector differentiation, velocity, acceleration of the vector point function, and we will be solving some of the problems. And next topic we have gradient, curl, and divergence. In that under that you will be solving the problems on solenoidal and irrotational field. So these are the three main topics you have under vector algebra. So where the questions will be normally based on these topics. Now this already we have learned. Okay. Now some of the some of the basics. Let me again tell. So after cross product and this one dot product and cross product, you need to know what is a you need to know what is what is the magnitude of a vector. You need to know what is a magnitude of a vector. Now, as you, it is shown on the screen, so you have the vector generally you can consider vector A, where the components are a1, a2, a3. Its magnitude is given by square root of. Just check that there is no i j k under the square root. It is a1 square, a2 square, a1 square plus a2 square plus a3 square. So it's just the magnitude. Okay. So how do you denote this? Magnitude of vector is square root of a1 square plus a2 square plus a3 square. So sum of the squares of the coefficients of i, j, k. So this we denote it as magnitude. Now apart from this, you should know what is known as unit vector. You know what is known as unit vector. What is the meaning of unit? Unit is one. A vector whose magnitude is one. That vector we call it as a unit vector. So for a given matrix, how do you find the unit vector? So unit vector of A, which we denote it as A cap. So wherever you come across this notation, wherever you come across this notation A cap, A cap is nothing but how do you define this vector A? How do you read this vector A by its magnitude? Just remember this definition, a ve unit vector, how do you define? Vector A by its magnitude. Magnitude already we have defined here. A1 square plus A2 square plus A3 square, square root of that. So, you have to divide the vector by its magnitude, which will give you unit vector. Dear students, these are all the important uh, uh, basics which you have to remember to solve the problems. So, magnitude and unit vector. Any vector you take, its what is that? Its Unit vector is given by always vector A by its magnitude. Now, we have learnt what is a unit vector, what is magnitude. So, let us little briefly, let us recall what all we need to know. First thing, how do you represent a vector? Then second thing, what is its magnitude? Then what is a unit vector? Then how do you add two vectors? How do you multiply? Multiply means there are two types of multiplication. One is what? Dot product and cross product. So, you should know what is a dot product? dot product between two vectors is a scalar and cross product between two vectors is a vector. So, these are the some of the basic things which you have to learn before entering into the exact syllabus. Now, let us come to the all this we have learnt. Now, one more definition we have angle between I will just write here angle between angle between two vectors. angle between two vectors. So, it is given by cos theta is equal to cos theta is equal to a dot b dot product between two vectors divided by product of its magnitude, product of its magnitude. Dear students, all these are the basic definition which you require to study the syllabus of your uh, mad dip. Now, angle between two vectors is defined as what? Cos theta is equal to a dot b dot product between two vectors divided by its magnitude. So, these are the some of the basic things which we need to know. Now, these are the basics which you have learnt already in your lower classes. Now, coming back to your syllabus, coming back to your syllabus. So, we will be starting with what is known as a position vector.
position vector. Now, already I have defined how to represent a point. Now, if you represent a point p x comma y comma z in the three dimension p x comma y comma z. Now, the position vector of this point is denoted by vector r. Position vector of this point is denoted by vector r which is x i plus y j plus z k. So, what do you mean by position vector? So, it is a it gives the position of a particle in the space like x y z vector r. Okay? Now, suppose your x y z are function of a single variable t x y z are function of a single variable t. So, now suppose just observe this x is a function of t, y is a function of t, y is a function of t, z is a function of t. See if you observe carefully everything every, all the variable are expressed in terms of single variable t. Now, if, we, if we, all the variables are expressed then r will become a function of t. So, r of t will be what x t i plus y t j plus z of t k. Just observe this if x y z are a function of a single variable t, okay, then vector that position vector r of t is given by x t of y plus y t of j plus z t of k. So, this we call it as a vector equation of the curve, this we call it as a vector equation of the curve because it gives the uh, it, it gives the equation of the curve traced by the particle. Okay. Now, next we have what is known as the differentiation of this vector. Now, once we have a function of t definitely we can differentiate. Now, r is a function of what t. So, r is a function of t. Now, let us learn how to differentiate this. Let us learn how to differentiate this vector. So, let us take the next uh, topic vector differentiation. Just like your ordinary differentiation, ordinary differentiation how to differentiate same way y is a function of x dy by dx you get. Now, what is your position vector? What we have? R of t. R of t is x t, y t and z t. R is a function of t. So, therefore, what is the derivative you get? dr by dt. So, differentiate, differentiate the position vector with respect to t. So, what do you get here? So, the first coordinate dx by dt, dx by dt into i plus dy by dt, dy by dt into j plus dz by dt into k. Just observe, just like your normal derivatives, like how you differentiate dy by dx. So, here also we have r is a function of t, therefore it will be differentiate each term with respect to t, dx by dt, dy by dt, dz by dt. So, we have differentiated this. Now, it has some physical meaning. What is that? Now, first thing, if we have dy by dx, dy by dx, what does it represent? If you take a point x comma y, a function, so what does dy by dx represents? dy by dx represent a tangent, right? You are learnt in your differential equations or differentiation, right? dy by dx represents a tangent. Same way, your dr by dt, dr by dt, what does it represent? So, it represents a vector along the tangent to the curve. So, this is nothing but a vector along the tangent. So, this you have to remember always the first derivative gives the tangent. So, it is a vector along the tangent to the curve. So, this is one more point you have to note dr by dt will give the vector along the tangent. Now, physically if you take with the physical applications, now t if you denote if you consider t as a time variable, then what does it remove? See r is a position vector, t is a time. So, it is same as your rate of change of displacement ds by dt. If s is the distance, t is a time. So, how do you represent? ds by dt is a velocity. Same way, if r is a position vector of a particle, dr by dt. dr by dt, what does it indicates? dr by dt indicates a, we can take that as dr by dt, we can take it as a velocity. Rate of change of displacement, dr by dt represents a velocity. 
Now, the moment we learn velocity, what is its next derivative? What is the rate of change of velocity? Rate of change of velocity is acceleration. So, how do you denote this acceleration now? How do you denote this acceleration? Acceleration is nothing but rate of change of velocity that is d by dt of dr by dt. Just check this. Now, we have defined velocity as dr by dt, dr by dt. Velocity we can denote it as dr by dt. Now, rate of change of velocity will give you acceleration. Therefore, acceleration is rate of change of velocity that is dr by dt, which we can write it as d square r by dt square. The second derivative, differentiation of first derivative will be second derivative d square r by dt square. So, just check this, a velocity the first derivative dr by dt is velocity, the second derivative that is d square r by dt square is acceleration. Dear students, so this will be a main uh, question in your uh, exam where you have to find the velocity and acceleration for a given vector. So, please remember this formula as the velocity is given by dr by dt, acceleration is d square r by dt square. An important thing what you have to remember, always we represent vector r as this is the definition you must remember x i plus y j plus z k. So, this r is the basic definition which you have to concentrate. So, it is r is given by x i y j z k where x, y and z are functions of t. So, since x, y, z are functions of t, when you differentiate with respect to t, r with respect to t, this is the same as your velocity, when you differentiate second time, that will be a acceleration. Dear students, these are the two main definitions which you will come across in your uh, application part, that is application of vectors. You can take this as application of vectors, where the first derivative gives velocity and second derivative will give you acceleration. Now, based on this, we have some of the questions. So, please note down these things where r is a vector x i plus y j plus z k and velocity is d r by d t, acceleration is d square r by d t square. So, these three, these three definitions you must keep it in your mind. Right. So, now we are learnt. So, basically what are the main thing we are learnt? What is the velocity? What is the acceleration? Before that, what is the position vector? These three main uh, definition you must remember to solve the problems. So, just make a note of this because we need this, we need this definition. Any vector, so vector A in the direction of, vector A in the direction of vector b. So, please understand this is given by, okay. So, it is nothing but a dot b cap, a dot b cap. Dear students, this we need to solve the problems, this definition. Please make a note of this vector a in the direction of vector b, any vector in the direction of other vector. So, what it is given by a dot b cap. Do you remember what is b cap? b cap is the unit vector of b, any, any always cap represents unit vectors. So, any vector a in the direction of b is given by vector a that is dot product between a, a dot b cap. So, this is the unit vector, b cap represents unit vector of b. So, please remember this, we need this to solve the problems, right. Now, let us take some simple problems, let us take some simple problems on uh, velocity and acceleration, right. Now, we have the first problem, it is on the screen. So, let us uh, just read this uh, question, a particle moves along the curve whose parametric equations are. So, they are given the, they have given the equation of the expression for x, y and z, where t is the time. Find the velocity and acceleration at any time t and also their magnitude at t equal to 0. So, this is given to us, right. Now, what you should find? Let us first write what is given to us. So, what is that they have given, uh, given to us? They are given the expression for x, y and z in terms of what? Just observe all the three are in terms of t. So, what is that they are given? 
x is equal to e power e power minus t, y is equal to 2, 2 cos 3t and z is equal to 2 sin 3t. So, they are given the values, the expression for x, y and z. So, what is asked to find out? We have to find velocity and acceleration. Now, let us first find, let us first find what is the velocity and acceleration. Then, let us move on to the next question, right? So, first thing, we have x, y, z in terms of t. Now, how, how velocity is defined? Just recall the definition. Velocity is defined as dr by dt, dr by dt. So, what I need? Is there anywhere R present here? So, R is not present here. We have to write on R. So, what is R given by? What is R given by? Dear students, just you have to remember this definition, a position vector of R. What is R given by? X of t i plus y of t j plus z of t k. Just observe this. R is represented as what? X of t i plus y of t j plus z of t k. So, now we know the value of x, y, z. Now, they directly instead of giving r, they are given the expression for x, y, z. So, what you have to do? Substitute the values of x, y, z in this. You get an expression for r. So, let us do that. So, r is equal to, now what is that we know? We know the value of x, y, z. Substitute e power minus t i, e power minus t i plus y of t is what? 2 cos 3 t. y of t is 2 cos 3 t and z of t is what? 2 sin 3 t. So, let us write this j and k. Just check this. r is given like this. Now, we have the expression for r. Now, let us read the question. Find the velocity and acceleration at any time t. So, so they have not specified the time for the first question, right? So, first let us write the, let us find the velocity. Now, just observe, velocity is given by what? dr by dt. Velocity is given by dr by dt. So, we have the expression for r. Find the derivative of r with respect to t. So, what you have to do? Differentiate, differentiate the right hand side with respect to t. So, what is that we have to differentiate? What is the differentiation of e power minus t? e power minus t is e power minus t into minus 1. So, just write that minus e power minus t i cap plus. Now, 2 is constant differentiation of cos 3 t. What is the differentiation of cos 3 t? 2 into differentiation of sin cos is minus sin. So, minus 3 sin 3 t. So, you have to learn some of the basic differentiation. So, differentiation of cos 3 t is minus 3 sin 3 t into j plus what is the differentiation of 2 uh, sin 3 t? 2 is constant, right? 2 as it is. Differentiation of sin 3 t is 3 cos 3 t into k. Now, just observe. It is again a vector. So, we have just differentiated this. Now, this is same as what? Minus e power minus t i minus 6 into multiply these two. 6 into sin 3 t. 6 into sin 3 t j then multiply these two, 2 3 is a 6, 2 3 is a 6 cos 3 t into k. Dear students, just observe this, this is again a vector. So, let us denote this simply as v. So, v stands for velocity. So, velocity is given by this. Now, what is the question? Find the velocity and acceleration at any time t. So, this is the velocity at any time t because t they have not specified. So, it remains as this. Okay. So, it will be as it is in terms of t. Now, what is that we need? We need to find the acceleration. We need to find the acceleration. So, how it is defined acceleration? Acceleration is nothing but rate of change of velocity which we denote it as d square r by dt square. Just check that velocity is dr by dt okay, which we have found out. Now, next we have to find the acceleration. Acceleration is nothing but rate of change of velocity. Rate of change of velocity again when you differentiate this is d square r by dt square. Now, we have the expression for dr by dt. So, how do you get the expression for d square r by dt square? 
we get the expression by differentiating velocity. So, differentiate this term with respect to with respect to what variable t the only variable available it is t. Now, let us differentiate again. So, when you differentiate e power minus t what do you get minus sign one more minus sign will come therefore, it will be minus into minus plus. So, it will be e power minus t i e power minus t i then minus differentiation of sin 3 t is what 3 cos 3 t already 6 is present 6 into 3 will be 18 minus 18 cos 3 t j just check that 6 3 is 18 similarly 6 into differentiation of cos 3 t is what minus sin 3 t so it will be minus 6 3 is 18 minus 18 into sin 3 t k so just observe the expression for observe the expression for velocity and acceleration so both are vectors see i j k is still present so we have i that is velocity given by this expression acceleration given by this expression just allah okay now this is the acceleration this is the velocity so what is that we have found so we have found the expression for we have found the expression for velocity and acceleration at any time t just observe this this is true for any time t now this is the first question read the question again find the velocity and acceleration at any time t so we have found what is the velocity at any time t acceleration at any time t now read the next question the next part of the question and also their magnitudes at t equal to 0 so how do you define a magnitude of a vector it is nothing but square root of so you remember how do you remember how do you find how do you find the magnitude of a vector see all this definition it should be clear about these things okay so how do you define how do you define the vector magnitude of a vector it is nothing but square root of a1 square plus b1 square or i will define this a1 a2 square plus a3 square just check that magnitude of the velocity we need at what time at what time we need at t equal to 0 now what shall we do so first let us find velocity velocity at t equal to 0 now let us find out velocity at t equal to 0 now just observe we have the expression for velocity in terms of t so what you have to do put t equal to 0 in this put t equal to 0 in equation expression 1 so what do you get so v is equal to v is equal to so when you put t equal to 0 when you put t equal to 0 what is e per 0 e per 0 anything to finite quantity to the power of 0 is always 1 e per 0 is 1 so there is a minus sign minus i minus i minus now put t equal to 0 what is sin 0 what is sin 0 sin 0 is 0 therefore this entire thing will be 0 we do not get term from the second one now what is the next one cos 0 what is cos 0 cos 0 is 1 so 6 into 1 so it will be plus 6 k just check this expression again now what are we doing we are evaluating velocity at time t equal to 0 so substitute here e power 0 is 1 so you get minus i so since sin 0 is 0 this term will vanish next cos 0 cos 0 is 1 cos 0 is 1 so 6 into 1 is 6 k so you get the velocity expression for velocity at time equal to 0 as minus i plus 6 k now what is the question you have to find their magnitude so we have to find the magnitude of this so what is the magnitude of this so find use the definition square root of the coefficient of this whole square minus 1 whole square plus 6 square so it will be nothing but what it will be nothing but what so evaluate this simplify this minus 1 square is plus 1 plus 6 square is 36 36 plus 1 is 37 so the magnitude of velocity is root 37 ok now now what is the next one you have to find both the magnitude of velocity and acceleration at t equal to 0 so we have got velocity at t equal to 0 similarly let us find the acceleration at t equal to 0 so let us find acceleration at t equal to 0 so let us substitute in this so what we have acceleration as let us take acceleration as a okay so you can call it as vector a if you want now what is that you have to substitute 
t equal to 0 in this. So, when I substitute t equal to 0 in this, what do you get? e power 0 is 1. Therefore, simply i, the first term, the second term, when you put t equal to 0, what will happen? Cos 0, 3 into 0 is 0. Cos 0 is 1 minus 18 j. Just check that cos 0 is 1 minus 18 j. So, similarly minus minus what is that sin 0? Sin 0 is 0. So, this will be, so you will not get any term, it is 0 times k. It is 0 times k. So, what is the acceleration we are getting? i minus 18 j minus 0 times k. You not have to write this, just uh, for your reference, I, write, I am writing this 0 times k. Now, what is that we need? We need the magnitude of the acceleration. We need the magnitude of the acceleration. So, how do you find the magnitude? I can use the same formula. So, square root of the sum of the squares, 1 square. Coefficient of i is 1. Coefficient of j is minus 18. So, plus minus 18 whole square. Okay. Now, you simplify this, we get the, what is that? Acceleration magnitude of the, this one, what is 18 square? 18 square, you can write it. Okay. So, magnitude of, so you get, you get the magnitude of acceleration, 18 square plus 1. Okay. Now, dear students, these are the, the main questions which will appear in the exams. Normally, this question is fixed, finding the velocity and acceleration. Now, there is some little bit changes in the questions. So, we can look into that question. So, let us take the next question. Now, let me read the question. A particle moves along the curve. Again, the similar kind. x is equal to 1 minus t cube, y is equal to 1 plus t square and z is equal to 2t minus 5. So, let us read the question. What is asked? Determine its velocity and acceleration. That is the first question. Find the component of velocity and acceleration at t equal to 1 in the direction of. So, they are given some vector. So, let us see what is given and what we have to find. Okay. Now, what is the first thing? So, what is given to us? Always, whenever a question is given, first write what is given. So, what is that key one? x is equal to x is equal to 1 minus t cube, y is equal to 1 plus t square and z is equal to what is that? z is 2 t minus 5, a similar kind like previous one. So, all the variables are expressed in terms of t. You need to find first velocity and acceleration on the same base you can on the same uh, like the previous question, we can find out velocity and acceleration. Remember, first let us write always the value of r. Always write this expression. X, r is what? x i plus y j plus z k. Always remember, this is the main definition of r. So, you must remember this r is x i plus y j plus z k. Now, what you have to do? Let us substitute the value of r. Let us substitute the value of r. What is the value of r? 1 minus, that is the value, so substitute the value of x, y, z. So, x is, x is 1 minus t cube, y is 1 plus t square, x is 1 minus t cube, y is 1 plus t square, j plus z is 2t minus 5 into k. Just like the previous example, it is simple and this is all the standard question, many times it keeps repeating. So, position vector which is in terms of t now. So, we have the vector r. Now, what, what we need to find the first question? The first question we have to find, we have to find what is the velocity and acceleration. So, let us find out what is the velocity. So, how it is defined? dr by dt. Velocity is dr by dt. Now, what is that we have to do? We have an expression of r in terms of t. So, just differentiate with respect to t. So, what is the differentiation of this bracket? So, differentiation of 1 is 0, differentiation of t cube is minus 3 t square i, minus 3 t square i plus differentiation of 1 is 0, differentiation of two t square is 2 t j plus differentiation of 2 t is 2, differentiation of 5 is 0, 2 times k. Okay. So, what is that we have? We have the expression for the velocity. Similarly, let us find acceleration. Let us find acceleration. So, what is the acceleration given by? Rate of change of velocity. Again, differentiate. 
differentiate dr by dt once again. So, what do you get? So, let us differentiate this minus 3 t square will be 3 2 is a 6 t i minus 6 t i plus differentiation of t is 1 plus 2 j plus differentiation of 2. 2 is a constant. Therefore, the differentiation of 2 is 0. Now, just verify that. So, we have the expression for velocity and acceleration. We have the expression for velocity and acceleration. That is the first question. Read the question. Determine its velocity and acceleration. So, we have found out its velocity and acceleration. What we need to find? Find the components. The next question. Read the next question. Read the next question. What is the question asked? Find the components of velocity and acceleration at t equal to 1 in the direction of so, they are given some vector. So, first let us find the components of velocity. First let us find this velocity and acceleration at time t equal to 1. So, let us find out first thing for the second question that is b. Let us find out what is velocity at time t equal to 1. So, at t equal to 1. Okay. So, let us find this at time t equal to 1 what is the velocity. So, now velocity. So, we have the expression for velocity in terms of t. Now, what you want to do? Substitute t equal to substitute t equal to 1. So, they again the value of t as 1. So, this becomes what? Minus 3 into 1 is minus 3, 3 i minus 3 i plus 2 j. Just observe, I am just substituting the value of t as what? 1. So, plus 2 k. Now, we got just observe, we got what is this? velocity velocity in terms of velocity at t equal to 1. So, now read the question again. Find the component of velocity and acceleration in the direction of. Do you remember in the a few minutes back I just informed you how to find vector a in the direction of vector b. Same way now I need let us call this direction that uh, in the direction of vector as capital D which is 2i 2i plus 3j plus 6k. Let us call the vector in the direction of vector they are given right. Let us call this as d. Now, what I need? I need vector v in the direction of vector d. Vector d, vector v in the direction of vector d. Read the question again in the direction of. So, therefore, velocity v in the direction of in the direction of d. So, do you remember we had given this definition this is nothing but what v dot d cap. Remember few minutes back I had explained to you what how to find the vector in the direction of the other vector. So, v dot d cap what is d cap it is a unit vector of vector d. Now, let us simplify that let us simplify that let us simplify so let us substitute. Now, what is that vector v is given by minus 3 i minus 3 i plus 2 j plus 2 k. Now, this is v dot it is a dot product. So, just I will put in the bracket dot. So, how do you find the how do you find the unit vector d? So, unit vector d is nothing but vector d vector d is 2 i plus 3 j plus 6 k 2 i plus 3 j plus 6 k. Just observe vector d cap I need d cap I need. Okay. So, therefore, 2i plus 3j plus 6k by unit vector means its magnitude. So, it is nothing but square of this 2 square is 4, 3 square is 9, 6 square is 36. 2 square is this right. Just observe. Okay. Now, v dot d cap, v dot d cap vector v in the direction of d. So, we have v and d cap. d cap is nothing but the unit vector. Now, so, this is a scalar a constant. So, you can find out this. We need a dot product between these two vectors. So, how do you find the dot product between these two vectors? Dot product between these two vectors will be dot product between these two vectors will be multiply the coefficients of i. So, minus 3 into 2. So, that is minus 6 plus 2 into 3. 2 into 3 is what? 6 plus 2 into 6 is 12. So, dot product between these two vectors is a scalar divided by 36 plus 4 is what 40 
root 49. Okay. Now, just let us simplify minus 6 plus 6 will get cancelled 12 divided by root 49 is 7. So, this is the component of velocity in the direction of vector d. Okay. So, any, any vector in the direction of d, any vector in the direction of d is given by v dot d cap. Similarly, similarly you can find out, you can find out velocity, velocity you have found out. Okay. Similarly, you can find out acceleration in this direction. How do you get acceleration in this direction? I think you can do that. Vector a will be, that is acceleration will be. So, let me write here. So, this will be what? Acceleration in the direction of d. So, this will be, so this will be what? Take the vector dot d cap. So, you can, students, you can find out that in the similar lines. Again, you get a scalar like this. Okay. So, this is the main question.